Hey guys, good morning. It's Dr. Chad. I'm here in my Hammond office. Uh, today's Monday. I wanted to follow up with everyone on my thoughts on the uh, COVID-19 virus. You know, it's funny how the world comes full circle. It was literally seven years ago today that my mother uh, suffered from a viral infection of her brain, herpes encephalitis, uh, which for layman's is basically shingles of the brain. You know, I've dealt with many patients with this disease process, and unfortunately, it is a very difficult disease process. Most patients usually die, and the ones that don't die are left with severe neurological problems. You know, and I went through this with my family, and obviously being a physician, I was the voice between the doctors and my family. And what I explained to my family, which was very difficult, as we continued to aggressively do therapies to save my mother's life, I explained that sometimes when you push too far, uh, that there's things worse than death itself. And what I mean by that is a devastating neurological problem uh, can cause a multitude of devastating issues uh, that are truly worse than dying. Uh, I think this is a nice parallel to what we're seeing in our country right now with the COVID-19 virus. Um, obviously, the media and our government is doing an excellent job uh, telling us the dangers of the virus, the number of people infected, and the number of people that are dying. What they're not telling us is the other side of the coin. Uh, this is war. We are at war with the virus, and as we all know with war, there's always a price to pay. Uh, no general or captain in our history has ever sent um, soldiers to war without calculating how many of those troops would die um, in the heat of battle. Uh, whenever they storm a beach or storm a storm a, a opposing base, they always understand the amount of uh, casualties that will happen based on their intel. Um, as we're fighting the COVID-19 virus, this is the first time in our history, in American history, that we have closed hospitals and sent doctors and nurses home uh, to practice this social isolation. I think what most people don't understand is the number of patients with chronic medical problems, diabetes, hypertension, pain, mental illness, kidney disease, lung disease, you name it, uh, that are held stable because we were able to perform elective imaging, labs, surgeries, procedures, physical therapy, chiropractic, massage, um, the list goes on. And my concern is as we take all these options away from people with chronic medical problems, these people are now gonna flood our ERs, these people now are gonna become unstable, and these people can soon die. In my world of pain management, I do 50 to 70 procedures a week. Um, I send people for spine surgery multiple times, 20, 30 times a week. I order multiple MRIs, and now I'm faced with a position where I have patients calling my office let me know that their pain is out of control because they can't get injections, they can't get physical therapy, they can't get their normal imaging and labs, and they're left with a situation which is, do I take more opioids, which obviously we understand the opioid crisis that we're also dealing with. Uh, very difficult decision for me because no matter what I decide, um, I can't help these patients, and at the end of the day, I'm left with um, the, like, the legislative aspect of opioid crisis versus socialization and the inability to do procedures. Um, my biggest plea right now to our government and to our news media is as we're sitting here watching the news over and over again, because most of us are not able to work and at home, instead of just presenting one side of the COVID-19 COVID epidemic, pandemic, please present the other side. I wanna see the number of suicides compared to 2017, 2018, 2019. I wanna see the number of homicides. I wanna see the number of murders. I wanna see the number of people dying from cardiac disease that in a normal world would have got their elective heart stand or would have got their stress test and that death could have been mitigated. I wanna see the number of people dying from stable lung disease not related to COVID-19 that are now dying because they can't get the medical care they needed. I wanna see the use of heroin on the streets right now. I wanna see the number of people with chronic pain mental illness and so forth that has a high level of morbidity um, associated with their inability to get the medical care that they need due to the shutdown across our entire country. I'm not saying what side is right or what side is wrong, but I think it's fair that as Americans, as we are the ones paying the price for this social isolation, and we're seeing these stats at a very high level on what the virus is doing, I, I only think it's fair that we get an understanding because I know the government has this data 
as to what the price of this is costing us. And I'm certainly not an economic person and I'm not gonna talk finances, but obviously there's a huge economic price that we're gonna pay and many people will never go back to a normal job. Um, and this is related to healthcare because if they're not able to afford their medicines or afford their medical therapy when this is all said and done, think about the aftermath of the medical payments that we're gonna be paying, whether it's morbidity, mortality, quality of life, you name it, uh, because we'll never be the same as society. And many of these patients will not go back to jobs, especially those in the entertainment, restaurant, and travel industry. And it'd be nice to know as each day goes by and we consider pushing this social isolation back to possibly May, possibly June, possibly July, is the cure truly worse than the disease? And as I went through with my mother and explained to my family, there's truly worse things worse than dying. And my concern, as I look at the numbers from the virus, and I see it's approaching 10,000. In 2017, suicide, homicide, and drug-related deaths was 151,000 people. So you can imagine in the state of stress and the lack of medical opportunities for these people to get treated, what this number can grow to. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're always comparing apples to oranges, always looking at, uh, sorry, we're always comparing apples to apples and make sure that we're always looking at both sides of the coin to truly understand the price that we're paying as we continue this war against this virus.